All right, what's up everyone? We have the set 10 reveal right now. We're gonna be going over everything that's gonna be changing in this new set. And I'm pretty excited because they are going all out. They've been sacking set nine for set 10, I believe. No one can convince me otherwise. So let's just get right into it. We're gonna be doing all the traits, the champions, augments, portal, system changes, items, everything you can think of that changes in set 10 will be covered in this video and I'll be giving my thoughts on the way through. So buckle up, grab some food or whatever, and let's just do this. So headliners, that's gonna be the new theme of the set. And also before we get into that, like all this new music stuff, a lot of the new set is all about the music. Each like major trait has their own theme and it'll play automatically as you kind of get in there. And there's like a melody, bass chords, drums, all that. So there's like a new music system that kind of goes along with it. So uh, back to the theme though, cause I guess that's like, is the set mechanic, the music stuff, but headliners is another one. Cause you need like a star of the show. It's pretty much gonna be like the chosen from the past and each champion has their own special effect. So it's actually chosen on crack if you think about it, because uh, not that you should do crack, but uh, chosen is going to be, no, actually you shouldn't, not that you should like, okay. you. You get it, okay. But Chosen was just like the two star plus like 100 health or something like that, whatever like random stat bonus they had back in the past. But now each unit has their own unique effect and they're a lot spicier than the ones before. So that's really cool thing about headliners. Uh, here are the chances of hitting each headliner on each level. So for one cost, you get them on level one, two, three, four, and five at these percentages, two costs at these, three costs at that, et cetera, et cetera. And you could even get legendaries. And you may have noticed, what is this? Level 10. You can now reach level 10 without getting one of those specialized augments. But just like with Chosen, you could only play one headliner. Uh, one of the headliner's traits counts as two. So you may notice that here it has like the two for the heart seal there. And it chooses a random one between the trait and they appear every fourth reroll. Lastly, headliners are already two stars similar to the chosen mechanic, but they also cost three times their normal one star price. So Ezreal is a four cost, he's gonna cost 12, and yeah, gonna be pretty wild there. We'll get into all their actual like bonus effects later on when we go over the champions. Uh, next up, we have Emerald being added right now. Doesn't really change anything in the grand scheme of things, at least I think. The only difference for me is that when you guys tune in to my unranked to diamond video, we'll be having one extra bonus game there. So that should be better for everyone, I guess. Uh, next up we have is system changes. Oh, they also changed the LP decay if you are into that. So it's no longer minus 250 for like all master plus. It's now negative 50 for master, 150 for GM, 250 for challenger. You could also bank more games so you decay a little bit less. Uh, system changes, this one is going to be pretty big because they're gonna change leveling forever. And I think it actually makes a lot of sense because level 10, 10 is just a round number. Why not use it? Why stop at nine? So level six all the way to nine are gonna be much easier to hit and the shop odds are gonna be changing. So minus four here, minus four, minus 12, minus eight and minus 20 for level 10. And then the shop odds are gonna be changed as well. So level six is the same, but level seven, 40% for three costs. That is pretty wild. Before it was 35 and at level eight, it was also 35. But now 40% level seven for three costs, 10% for four costs. That is a major change. So three cost reroll, probably gonna be a lot better, I think at least. And rolling on seven to stabilize on four one, maybe we don't do that as much anymore. Maybe we do it like half the amount of times or even like a third of the amount of times and we do like fast eight now because four costs, you pretty much need level eight to get there. So that's gonna be a big, big, big change there. Uh, they changed all the odds for level eight here. Less legendaries as well. Level nine, a few changes there too less legendaries, and then the level 10 big daddy, that's gonna be where you get all those three costs, five stars or whatever. So onto the next one, legends have been removed. Legends never die. I love this little like rest in peace thing. It's pretty funny, uh, but <sighs> we could talk about legends for hours. Actually, no, not that long. I, I thought legends were fun. I think the mechanic itself is good, but they need to change it, you know? Uh, I was thinking maybe keep legends in, but maybe make all the legends apart from Poro suck so that none of the like more competitive people play it. So then it doesn't like trickle down into everything else. But if you really like legends and you could still play them, even though you know they suck, it's like opting into something that sucks, but uh, whatever. Team Planner, they already did this before. Uh, new set every four months, two passes are released per set. It's gonna be pretty cool too. So no more mid sets, that's gonna be the big change. That's why I kind of knew they were gonna sack set nine to prepare for set 10 because this is like the new era of TFT or whatever. Uh, they also are going to support tablets. I've never played on a tablet. I played a little bit on my phone. I definitely prefer PC, but we have a bunch of little legends now too. So we have set, 
We have Chalk, we have Aeotian, Umbra, Scratch, Gloop, Boba Sprite, and Bellswear. Hmm, which one is gonna be the best? Motorcycle one's probably gonna be pretty cool, but yeah, I'm sure those will be available either through like loot boxes or the pass. Now onto the fun part, we have the Origins. Actually, do we want to do Champions or Origins first? Uh, let's do Origins. So we have 8-bit, that's what we're gonna start off with. Gain 5% attack damage and begin keeping score. When your team deals damage, your score goes up. For every high score you've beaten, 8-bit champions gain more attack damage. So 1.75, 3%, 5%. All these numbers, by the way, subject to change hugely. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention for the leveling changes is that uh, they also change the bag sizes. So this thing's wrong. It says cancel, but... Four costs apparently are gonna go from 12 to 11. So what that means is when you are contesting four cost units, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult now, but just like a tiny bit, nothing like too, too crazy, I would imagine. Uh, but country's gonna be the next one. When your team loses 40% of their health, a dread steed charges onto the battlefield and empowers your country units. Each country star level increases its health and attack damage. Yeah, brother. Okay, so <laughs> I don't actually listen to any country at all. 8-bit, I kind of like the lo-fi music a little bit. Maybe I'm like a little messed up there, but uh, apparently I like that. Other people enjoy it too, even though it sounds kind of off a little bit. Um, I really like lo-fi for some reason, but uh, Tom Kench, Katarina, Samira, Urgot, and Thresh for country, Corky, Garen, Riven, and Caitlyn for 8-bit. Next up, we have Disco. Not a big Disco guy, gonna be honest there. Uh, but gain a placeable Disco Ball. Is there gonna be Orianna here? On combat star champions next to it gain stacking attack speed and are healed for a percentage of their max health every three seconds. So um, the, the four, five, and six trait, we have Nami, Tarek, Gragas, Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank's a cat. That's pretty funny. And then Twisted Fate. Oh, Twisted Fate is back? Okay, I can't wait to see his ability because Twisted Fate is one of my favorite champions uh, in like League of Legends lore or whatever. EDM, I used to be a big EDM person. Uh, use the EDM selector to sample a champion. Periodically, EDM champions transform into the sample champion, sampling their attack damage and ability power and casting their ability so they can gain their stats, cast more frequently, and like get even more from like a three, four, five. We have Jax, we have Lux, we have Zack, and we have Zed. Oh, Zed is back. Hmm. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Yeah, EDM, it's like, I used to listen to it a lot in high school and college, but then like, I don't listen to it anymore. I don't know why. Emo, never really got into that, but Emo champions have reduced maximum mana. Whenever an ally dies, Emo champions gain mana. Okay, I am a little bit Emo like in real life, but I do not listen to the music at all. But I'm guessing if you get an Emo spat, that could be really good because you just get like a ton of mana on a champion that maybe like really wants it a lot. That could be unlocking some really good combos. We have Annie, Amumu, Vex and Poppy. Next up, we have Heartsteel. Earn hearts by killing enemies. Gain even more by losing player combats. Every four player combats convert hearts into powerful rewards. So this is gonna be the new Econ trait, I believe. So what they are doing differently this set compared to previous sets for Econ traits is you can now play your Econ trait whenever you feel like it. You don't have to like only hit it early game and then like have to do it in the early game and then the units are useless everywhere else. So that's gonna be changing. We have a trait that now allows you to just like play it whenever. So you could like pivot in between these boards and hopefully that should be pretty cool. But like every four player combats convert hearts into powerful rewards and you get hearts based on three, five, seven, nine. Man, if you have a trait that does nothing and you put nine of those units in, one, two, three, four, five, six units, First of all, how are you even gonna get there? Second of all, how are you just not gonna die? Like, okay, that topic for a different day, but Cassante, Aphelios, Set, Yone, Ezreal, and Kane. Okay, all the edge lords are kind of in that uh, trait or whatever you wanna call it. Hyper Pop, grant mana and four seconds of attack speed to their two closest allies after casting. So this is gonna be one of the support traits, Lulu and Ziggs. Uh, Ill Beats, this is just gonna be Alawi. Gain two, two, eight placeable spirit tentacles based on Alawi's star level. All right, pretty nice, pretty nice. And again, we're gonna be going over the champions later. Jazz, okay. Jazz, I kind of got into a little bit, but like, it's like a once a year type of thing I listen to. Uh, your units gain bonus health and deals bonus damage for each active non-unique trait. Hmm. Each active non-unique trait. So this is really good for horizontal comps then. Okay, that's gonna be kind of hard to fit it. Oh, I, I'm pretty excited about this because a lot of comps in the recent sets, they've all been like vertical traits. It's like go for nine Demacia, go for nine this, nine that, 10 this, eight that. But bringing it back a little bit to the old times with Jazz. Oh, maybe that's why they chose Jazz for this one. Okay, Bard, Misfortune, and Lucian. 
KDA, all units that start combat in the lighted hexes gain max health, ability power, attack damage, and KDA champions go all out, which doubles these bonuses. Okay, so this is just kind of like a team-wide buff that buffs the KDA champions even more so, it looks like, as long as you're on the squares. Might grief your positioning a little bit, but Zephyr's no longer like that prominent. Same with Shroud, so it's kind of a lot easier to do those types of positioning. So Evelyn, Lilia, Kaisa, Seraphine, Nico, Ari, and Akali. Okay, so... Um, all the KDA champs make sense. Maestro, Jin's another one of my favorite champs. Jin has an attack speed of 0.9 and converts 1% bonus attack speed into 0.8% attack damage. So similar to what he had before, while conducting, Jin's rifles fire at the same rate and he gains 10 mana per volley. Every fourth volley deals 200% damage. Mixmaster, the Mixmaster chooses a mode to modify their attacks and abilities. That's going to be Sona, so I'm assuming you're going to be able to pick and choose. On to the next one, we have Pentakill. Pentakill champions deal more damage and take 20% reduced damage. Each time you kill an enemy, a Pentakill champion becomes empowered and increases their bonus by 50%. Okay, so they're kind of like the snowballing one, but within the game. After 5 kills, all of your Pentakill champions are empowered, and your entire team gains 66% attack speed for the rest of combat. So I'm guessing they're better more so in the late game they are in the early game because you can't really kill five champions or if you do the fight's kind of already over so i'm assuming they're going to be like late game monsters that's kind of what i'm seeing here but we have olaf nar kale mordekaiser karthus viego and yorick punk never got into that but gain bonus health and attack damage this bonus is increased by one percent each time you spend gold on a shop refresh Ooh, okay so if you just re-roll the oh yeah one and two costs oh, so it's like a re-roll a new take on re-roll trait after Punk's fight in combat, your first shop refresh costs 1 gold and grants 3%. And then you get health attack damage for 2, 4, 6. Okay, true damage. Deal bonus true damage. Uh, okay, that, that makes sense. <laughs> true damage champions holding an item gain a unique bling bonus for their ability. That's going to be Kennen, Yasuo, Senna, Echo, Akali, and Kiana. Oh, but that's true damage Akali. So maybe Akali changes based on kind of like different things that happen, I'm guessing. So wild card's going to be the next one. If you win combat with Kane, he becomes the Shadow Assassin. If you don't, Ross takes over instead. Okay, so if you win, you get him. Okay, every time he kills two champions, you gain a reward based on his form. Either gold if you're like winning or health if you're losing is what I'm guessing. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a way to get health back later on. And then now we have the classes, Big Shot. Okay, At gain attack damage. This bonus is increased by 400% for three seconds when Big Shot champions use their ability. Corky, Kaisa, Misfortune, Ezreal, and Jin. Brawler's back, so health plus like a percent bonus health. Olaf, Tom Kench, Gragas, Set, Zack, and Ilawi. I wonder if there's going to be like reroll Olaf again. That was kind of cool before. Uh, he has one cost, so it's a little different. Breakout, Akali is a member of the KDA group or true damage depending on which trait has fielded more champions. She gains a different ability depending on which form she takes. All right, makes sense. Crowd Diver, deal bonus damage plus 1% more each second. When crowd divers die, they jump onto the furthest enemy, dealing 300 damage and stun. There are this many champions that can do that? This has got to be like one of the best support traits that I've seen in like a very long time. You explode and you stun. Okay, that has to be really good. Evelyn, Katarina, Yone, Zed, and Kiana. That has to be absolutely wild. Crowd diving is pretty risky. I would not try it, you know? Uh, Dazzler abilities dazzle enemies for two seconds, reducing their target's damage by 25% and dealing a percent of the ability's damage as bonus true damage over the duration. 20, 40, 65, we have Nami, Bard, Lux, TF, and Ziggs. Okay, so this one's kind of like the Dazzler of the past, but it's for all damage, not just AD. And they also deal a percent of the ability's true damage. Okay, this is a throwback to Chosen. Oh, there we go. We have the Edge Lords right now. Okay, gain attack speed when their target drops below 50% health. Double the attack speed gained. Melee Edge Lords also slash through them on their next attack. So that's three, five, seven. We have Yasuo, Kale, Riven, Yone, Viego, and Kane. By the way, I'm not going like too deep into the numbers, obviously, because these are all going to change so much on the PBE. Uh, I'll definitely be playing. So uh, if you guys are up to like playing some games with me i'll probably be streaming it whenever i like wake up or something like that probably be early in the morning though executioner abilities can critically strike and they gain critical strike damage as their target loses health critical strike chance increases okay so it's kind of like uh the executioner trait of the past or like even very similar to vanquisher so we have twitch samira vex akali both akalis actually and karthus 
and then Guardian, once per combat at 50% health, Guardian should shield themselves and their closest allies for a percent of their max health. So generic tank trait, but ooh, there are a lot of... Wait a minute. It's a 2, 4, 6, but there are like 8 champions here. So maybe they add... Or 7 champions, so maybe they add some, or like an 8 later on. But we have Kennen, Tarek, Pantheon, Amumu, Nico, Thresh, and Yorick. Mosher, Mosh Pitting, all right. Gain attack speed and Omni Vamp, healing for a percent of damage dealt, increased by up to 100% more based on their missing health. So this is kind of like, what is it, Slayer? Very similar to that in a way. Vi, Nar, Jax, Set, Urgot, Poppy, and Yorick. I cannot wait to see their abilities. Rapid Fire, your units gain attack speed, so uh, every time they attack, they just attack faster and faster. So it's kind of like built-in Rage Blade. Jinx, Aphelios, Senna, Caitlyn, and Lucian. Sentinel. Your team gains armor and magic resist. Sentinels gain double. So this is just like a team-wide defensive buff if you need it. Cassante, Lilia, Garen, Echo, Mordekaiser, and Blitzcrank. Interesting, they don't have a two cost there. Spellweaver, generic spell casting trait or whatever that we normally have. Annie, Gragas, Seraphine, Echo, Lulu, Ari, and Sona. Uh, your units gain 15 AP, spell weavers gain more, and whenever they cast, they gain even more. And lastly, we have super fans. Super fans improve your headliner. All right. So if you're like really all in on one champion, I guess you go for super fan. Uh, but headliners get a completed item. Well, that's weird, because wouldn't you want to like put all your items on your headliner anyways? Okay, whatever. Uh, headliners gain 300 health and 15% omnivamp and item upgrades to Radiant. Yeah, the fifth one and fourth one definitely seem pretty viable. I wonder if you could like re-roll this and then like play this with the other re-roll comp. That would probably make a lot of sense. All right, let's see all the champions now. One cost champions, we're going to start with that. We have Annie, Dark Disintegrate, deal magic damage to the current target. If you cast a Dark Disintegrate at least four times this combat, gain 50% attack speed and it targets one additional enemies. Headliner plus 20 AP. Corky, deal physical damage to enemies within one hex of the current target and wound them for a few seconds. Ooh, that's like a pretty good utility from a one cost. Wound reduces healing received by 50%. Headliner plus 20 AD. All right, that's 8-bit and big shot. Annie was emo and spellweaver. Next up, we have Evelyn Whiplash. That was a really good movie if anyone hasn't seen that yet. Uh, music themed as well, right? Uh, she's going to be KDA and Crowd Diver. Deal magic damage to the current target for 4 seconds, gain 50% AS, and restore health on attack. Headliner effect, plus 150 health, plus 10 AP. Okay, so I was hearing that the headliner effects were a little more spicy, but I'm guessing maybe the later ones have it. Next up, we have Jinx. Uh, Jinx is going to be Punk and Rapid Fire. Okay, so she's going to be attacking really qu quickly then. Passive is Minigun, Attacks Grant, Attack Speed. Passive is Rocket Launcher, Attack Steal, Bonus Physical Damage, so Active is swapping between them. So I guess you stack up really fast and then you deal a bunch of damage later. If there's going to be a one-cost carry, maybe it's going to be Jinx. Headliner effect is, oh, this is where they get spicy, I guess. Miniguns attack grants an extra 1% attack speed. Rocket Launcher attacks deal a 10% AD bonus damage. All right, pretty cool there. Cassante soundproof. I probably need to be soundproof in my room because we hear sirens all the time blaring outside, but enter a defensive stance, reducing damage taken for 2.5 seconds. Afterwards, deal physical damage to the current target. Okay, so generic, like kind of like Alawi ish kind of uh, headliner effect, 300 HP. Next up, we have Kennen, and I mean Alawi from like the previous set. Shock and all. Discharge jolts over three seconds. Each jolt deals magic damage to a random enemy within range and stuns for one second. Bling bonus, discharge at an additional target for 60% damage and stun duration. Okay, so it's like the utility one cost, guardian, true damage, and super fan. Ooh, pretty tanky, pretty tanky. So I, I like the super fan. Maybe we could get some like cool combos going if you get like a really nice, uh, what's it called, headliner effect. Um, but his is going to be 100 health, jolts heal 2% max health. Kennen's like a pure tank then. Mm. Normally I don't really think of Kennen as a tank, even though like... He does some hardened gauges, you know, but like, I don't think of him as like a beefy guy, you know, it's just like this little rat or whatever, you know. All right, now we have Lilia, Confetti Bloom. Deal magic damage to adjacent enemies, heal Lilia and her nearest allies. Headliner effect, 150 health, Confetti Bloom heals 20% more. That's going to be KDA, Sentinel, and Superfan. So kind of like very supporters. You got the Sentinel with like resistances to everyone. You got like the Superfan going as well. Nami with the Disco and Dazzler. Disco Prison. Okay, deal damage to current target and stun them for 1.5 seconds, and headliner is more AP. Doesn't really do too much on her, more of a CC unit I'm seeing right now. Olaf, we have Berserker Rage. Heal on attack for every 1% missing health, gain attack speed. And then headliner effect, 150 health, armor, and magic resist. She's going to be Pentakill and Brawler. Tom Kench, next one, Country and Brawler. 
Rawhide, passive, each instance of damage taken is reduced. Headliner, plus 300 health. Taric, Mirror's Blessing, gain shield for 4 seconds. The next 2 attacks deal bonus magic damage. And then you also get health and armor. Vi, the harder they fall, deal physical damage to the current target. Stun them and reduce their armor for the rest of combat. If the target has more current health than Vi, deal empowered damage instead. Okay, so it's kind of like Cassiopeia where you like do the first one, then you like hit them again, hit them a little harder. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense with the name of the ability. A uh, headliner effect is going to be health and AD, punk and mosher, not bruiser this time, or brawler, whatever it is. And then lastly, for one cost, we have Yasuo. Synthesizer strike, deal damage to the current target. If they die, permanently gain 2% AD. Okay, so if you start stacking Yasuo, maybe even with like an augment that also stacks at the beginning, you can get some pretty wild thing. Okay, that I want to try that. Edgelord and true damage, bling bonus, synthesizer strike, executes enemies under 10% health. And then we have the 100 health and omnivamp for a headliner. All right, two cost champions is next. Aphelios, moonlight, lullaby, Deal physical damage to the current target and physical damage to the adjacent enemy. Stun the current target. If this kills them, stun nearby enemies for one second. Ooh, I like this take a lot. Rapid fire and heart seal, by the way. Because a lot of times you have a boring champion that just stuns people and you're like, all right, let me just throw them in. They stun, great. If not, like, who really cares, right? But if you have an effect that's like, oh, if it kills someone, stun more enemies, then you're like, do I itemize them for mana? Do I itemize them for, like, pure damage? Hmm, you kind of have to make the choice now. Or they just suck, or are OP. Those, those are the three options. <laughs> Bard, Jazz, and Dazzler. Improv. So, plays a tune of four random notes from the following. Doot, deal magic damage to the current target. Chime, heal the lowest health ally. And tip, drop one gold and play another note. Of course, we have tipping still because, like, holy cow. Uh, you have to tip for, like, watching this video. 20%, please. And then headliner effect. Every 10 casts, Bard gains a meep. On his first cast of combat, every meep plays an extra note. And then we have Garen, gain max health. Okay, Garen's next attack deals physical damage. That one's a little boring, but whatever. Gets more health from the headliner. This one's going to be 8-bit and Sentinel. Nar is a triple trait. Pentakill, Superfan, and Mosher. Rabid Fandom. Okay, leap over the current target and transform for the rest of combat, gaining health, AD, and subsequent cast deal physical damage to the current target. More health and at combat start transforms into Meganar, so you'd like completely skip the thing if you had the headliner. Next up we have is Gragas Boogie Hour. Uh, heal health over two seconds, then deal magical damage to adjacent enemies and chill them for three seconds. Okay, so similar to Ash, but in melee form. Reduce damage dealt to the Gragas by 8% and increase the damage he deals by 8%. Counter Melody for Jax, that's going to be EDM plus Mosher. Leaps at the highest health target within range and deals magic damage to them. Then deals magic damage to all adjacent enemies, gaining attack speed for the rest of combat. Is that good? That doesn't sound that great. Okay, maybe like, it depends on what the numbers is, but can you get this much carry potential from two costs? I've been noticing a lot of the units, most of them are damage units. And normally I don't really like damage units at low cost because you have to either re-roll for them to make them strong or like they're kind of just trait bots. So we'll have to see there. Kaisa got the boom. Maneuver to a new location within two hexes and fire missiles at the furthest enemy. It deals physical damage to the first enemy hit. Uh, and then more AD, more range, KDA, and Big Shot. Uh, what was Big Shot again? Oh, they gain bonus damage when they cast their ability. All right, so Katarina, Bouncing Blade. Throw a blade at the current target that bounces three times, dealing magic damage each time. Headliner effect, plus 200 health. Her final blade bounce deals 66% bonus damage. Kale, this is going to be Pentakill and Edgelord. Fires of Ascension. You know, I kind of like the Ascending Kale from before, but I don't know if they could do that two times in a row. For five seconds, attack steal bonus damage uh, in a way behind the target and 30% shred for four seconds. Afterwards, deal finale damage to enemies around the target, and then shred is just reducing MR. Headliner is more attack speed. Pantheon, too tough to kill. Okay, that's, that's a lie, right? Reduce damage taken for 2.5 seconds. Afterwards, deal physical damage to the three enemies who have dealt the most damage to Pantheon. Headliner, more health, armor, and MR. Um, I say it's a, it's a meme or whatever because like whenever I play with Pantheons, they just like die instantly. So uh, normally they're on my team. Uh, Punk and Guardian for that one. We have Senna next, rapid fire, and true damage. Uh, summon a subwoofer at the current target's location. It pulses three times, dealing magic damage to enemies within one hex radius each time. Bling bonus, minus 15 mana. And then 10% AD for headliner and each subwoofer pulse grows slightly larger. So I'm liking this a lot. A lot of the abilities, they're not just recycling anymore. 
it's like different takes on them. Like maybe one thing that was on a melee champion before, they're putting on a ranged champion and vice versa. But there are some things that are just completely new, which definitely is going to be a lot more interesting in this set because I've been kind of getting a little bored of those like doing the same thing every single time. I'm a bit of like a boomer myself. Like I, I actually don't like changes that much. Like I played chess for so long, there's no patches there, right? But for this one, for TFT, this set, kind of cool, okay? Because they're finally changing things up like a lot, substantially. Uh, I didn't really say this that much in set nine, I don't think. But on the high note, uh, send a high note to the largest clump of units. It deals magic damage to nearby enemies and heals nearby allies. Every two casts sings an extra high note that deals 60% damage and heals 60%. Uh, Twitch is up next. Bottled Anarchy throws an explosive vial at the current target that deals damage to enemies within one hex, followed by seven secondary explosions that deal damage to random enemies from within two hexes. Uh, for each enemy crit by the initial explosion, deal an additional secondary explosion. Okay, so you can like get a lot of explosions then. Headliner effect, 15 AD, 20% crit. All right, three cost champions. What is Twitch again? He is a punk and executioner. Oh yeah, makes sense, executioner, right? Uh, three cost champions. So again, this is gonna be pretty interesting because level seven, three cost reroll, probably gonna be really easy to hit these guys. So <laughs> Emo Amumu, of course, Guardian, Thrash, passive, when attack, gain two armor, stacks 25 times. Hmm, Titans Resolve Amumu is sounding pretty good. Active, deal magic damage to adjacent enemies. Every third cast has double radius and stuns for 1.5 seconds. Uh, get more health and MR when he is, uh, what do you call it, headlined. Echo is going to be triple trait, true damage, sentinel, and spellweaver. That's quite a bit. Record scratch, deal magic damage and stun enemies within two hexes for 1.5 seconds. Gain shield for four seconds. Bling bonus while shield is up. Heal 60 health every 0.5 seconds. Headliner effect, plus 200, plus 20% AP. All right, Lulu, Saccharin, I don't know how to say it, like Saccharin Love. Okay, I, th I think that's it. <laughs> Fire a bolt towards the current target. It deals magic damage to the first unit it passes through and magic damage to the second unit it hits. Every third cast, stun the nearest enemy for 1.5 seconds and deal magic damage to them instead. I'm assuming like a Spirit Shojin or Blue Buff probably going to be pretty solid. Hyper Pop and Spellweaver, by the way. Lux is going to be EDM, Dazzler, Laser Light Show. Fires a beam of light at the furthest enemy, dealing magic damage to all enemies hit. Headliner, 15 crit. Laser Show Strike can critically strike. And then we have Misfortune, double up. Okay, this is going to be Jazz and Big Shot. Misfortune's always pretty cool. Uh, deal physical damage to the current target and physical damage to the closest target behind them. Okay, so it's like the pop pop shot double up. Uh, if either die, gain 40 or gain attack speed for four seconds. Headliner effect 25% AD. Mordekaiser, Face Melter, Pentakill, and Sentinel. Gain shield and deal magic damage over three seconds to adjacent enemies. After explode and deal magic damage when Face Melter kills, gain 8% AP and AD and eight armor and magic resist. Headliner effect, plus 300 health, 5 AP when face melter kills, gain 2% permanent ability power. Oh, so you know those times you get a random Mordekaiser at the start of the game or like a random three cost? Start sacking, you know, him and Yasuo are gonna be pretty fun. Maybe do a video on like infinite AP or like AD, whatever it is. All right, Nico cosplay. Uh, cosplay is her highest health teammate, gaining a shield percent of the teammate's health for four seconds. When the shield breaks, deal percent of the shield's initial value as magic damage to enemies. So great in like multi-tank comps, I would assume. And super fan. Okay, so you could like have this really big tank, be a super fan, cosplay them. Okay, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Guardian and KDA. Is she even in KDA? I thought it was like five people or four people or something. Headliner effect, plus 200 health when she cosplays an ally, grant that ally 20 mana. We have Riven next, 8-bit and Edgelord, Va Voxel defense, uh, gain a shield for the next 6 seconds, attacks deal physical damage to enemies adjacent to the target. Okay, so it's kind of like a cleave. I miss 4-cost Riven's ability, where she jumped around everywhere and kind of like soloed everything, gave herself a shield and dealt damage. That was a fun, fun time. But headliner effect, 200 health, AD, armor, and magic resist. Uh, Samira thrills, that kills. Okay. Passive, attacks that critically strike grant a stack of style up to six stacks. Each stack grants attack speed. 
And then the active part is deal physical damage to the current target, then another physical damage per style stack, afterwards reset style. Headliner is 20 AD, 10% crit. By the way, I know that a lot of these sound pretty complicated, but at the end of the day, you just need to know if they like deal damage or not, if it's AD, AP, things like that. Um, but obviously, if you're trying to like super sweat or like theory craft, then like knowing everything is probably gonna be pretty helpful. Um, that's gonna be country and executioner. We have set, hardsteel, brawler, and mosher. And then his ability is Swagger. Uh, deal magic damage to the current target and magic damage to enemies in a cone around them. Gain shield for two seconds. Increase by one for every five health missing. Okay. Headliner effect 250. After dropping below 15% health or dying, gains 50. Oh, I'm liking set. This is a pretty cool effect. And his shield is going to be big when he's got like massive health, right? So I guess you could like Warmogs plus like the headliner effect. Maybe throw on a stone plate for some resistances. That'd be pretty cool. Urgot, this looked like Vagar for a uh, moment, but he is going to be Country and Mosher. Fire from his fingertips. For 8 seconds, convert bonus attack speed to attack damage. Attack steal physical damage in a cone and grant Urgot 30% of the damage dealt as 5 second shield. A lot of shields this set. Is Guardbreaker going to be OP? We've been reading like a lot of shields, but uh, Headliner is AD and Omnivamp. Looming Darkness from Vex, she's going to be Emo and Executioner. Toss a shadow at the current target that stuns enemies with one hex uh, for 1.5 seconds after it explodes and deals magic damage to enemies within one hex. Okay, headliner, more AP. So you get AP from headliner if you do it. Keep in mind, you can only have one headliner, right? But emo gives you mana, executioner, like the crit stuff. Hmm. Maybe you could do some like one-shot vex kills or something like that. Uh, next up we have is Yone Spirit Cleave. Gain stacking Omnivamp for the rest of combat slash twice. Deal physical damage to enemies in a cone each time. And then Omnivamp is just healing. And then Headliner, 200 health, 20% AD. All right, next up we have Forecast. Again, Forecast is going to be a little different because um, I was watching a different video and uh, Mortdog was saying how 12 units were used to be in the Forecast pool. Now it's going to be 11. So again, it's going to be like a little more difficult to contest certain units, but um, hopefully like maybe flex play is back I don't know and then you like pivot out of stuff Ari is gonna be KDA and Spellweaver blow a kiss at current target it deals magic damage and briefly stuns them if the target has never been kissed before send out an orb and deal magic damage instead all right comment down below if that's you uh, headliner 25% bonus AP and then we have Akali next KDA breakout and executioner remember there are two Akalis we're gonna do true damage next but unrelenting flow <laughs> Okay, sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. Uh, throw a shuriken at the furthest unmarked enemy that deals physical damage and marks them. Dash to every marked enemy and deal physical damage to each. Headliner effect, plus 300, 10% attack speed. Okay, is it like, does she change between AP and AD? Maybe not, okay. Probably just like only physical then. Throw three waves of kunai at the closest targets. Uh, each wave deals physical damage split between targets hit. For each target that survives all three waves, refund mana. Bling bonus, heal for 20% of the damage dealt. All right. It would have been really cool. Maybe it's like doesn't make sense because if you build one way, you want to be able to play the other way. But what if she did AD for one uh, trait and then AP for the other? I guess this one she does true damage. So maybe it could have been done because like... Maybe the type of uh, way you buffer up doesn't really matter that much. It would have been cool. And then they scale in kind of similar ways or something like that. And then you put like the flex items like handed justice on her. Maybe they could have done that. Hmm. Maybe next set, next set, hoping. Uh, Blitzcrank, <laughs> dude, the cat. I can't, man, this is too funny. <laughs> Electric Groove, okay, deal. Magic damage to nearby enemies every two seconds. All right, so Morello or Sunfire, probably gonna be really good on Blitzcrank then. That's, I like that because it's like, you could do either or and it's gonna work on the guy. So kudos, you know? Uh, active, gain a shield for five seconds, deal passive damage every second instead. Uh, enemies take an additional 1% of their max health as damage. And then headliner effect, uh, you get health. Passive zap also deals additional max health damage. Do you want a chosen tank? I don't really know. I guess you just take whatever you need for your board. I remember in the chosen set, set four, you wanted to be like really flexible with your chosen. I actually did not really like the play style. It took me like a long time to kind of get used to, but uh, once you do it, like the game makes so much sense, but hopefully you don't like need a damage, uh, what do you call it? Like chosen or whatever you want to headliner. Uh, but next up we have Caitlyn. Caitlyn is gonna be eight bit and rapid fire, makes sense. Line up shots at the four furthest enemies. Shots deal physical damage to the first enemy hit. 
And then headliner effect is AD, champ hunt also adds one additional shot. I like things like that, you know? Instead of four, it hits five because it adds like a new dimension to the champion. Next up, we have Ezreal True Shot Barrage. Uh, blink away from the current target and deal physical damage to them. Every third cast, deal physical damage to all enemies in a line. So probably want some mana regen, heart steal, and big shot. What if you did like emo Ezreal or something like that? Hmm, what would that even look like? I don't, I don't know. But <laughs> next up, we have Karthus Pentakill and Executioner Death Growl. Deal magic damage to the five lowest health enemies. Gain 10 mana for each that... Ooh, you could just reset with Karthus. So uh, just put mana items on him, get a lot of AP. Maybe you crit sometimes. It's like a reset champion, but like a soft reset, you know? But it is also AoE, so that could be kind of devastating. Poppy is the Rhythm Master, apparently. Emo and Mosher. Gain attack damage based on bonus health. By the way, I don't think Poppy's ever been a 4 cost before. She's been a 1 cost, a 3 cost. Maybe that's it. Now 4 cost. Unless I'm missing something. Uh, but gain 60 armor and MR for 6 seconds and hammer the nearest enemy 3 times, dealing physical damage and restoring health each time you get hit. Uh, and then if this kills an enemy, slam 2 additional times. A lot of things are like built upon each other. Are the fights going to be like really snowball-y? Is that what's going to happen? It kind of seems like it. Headliner is more health and AD. Thresh is going to be the next one. Devil's Roundup. Stun the largest group of nearby enemies and deal magic damage to each. Thresh heals for a certain base heal plus 100% of the total damage dealt. Headliner effect, 200 health, reduce max mana by 40. So he's gonna be the CC four cost unit of the set, Guardian and Country. Get used to seeing a lot of Thrash. He's gonna probably be the most contested unit. They always are whenever they have like the four cost CC unit. Twist of Fate, wild cards. Okay, finally, Disco and Dazzler. Is that a good combo? Okay, it's kind of like supporty, right? Throw cards divided between the current target and the three nearest enemies. They reduce MR by one and deal magic damage. Headliner, throw four extra cards. Oh man, I don't want TF to kind of be like, kind of supported. Maybe he's like a good secondary carry. Kind of seems like that. Deals like AOE damage, reduces MR, is also Dazzler. I mean, still gonna be good, but probably gonna be a secondary carry. All right, Diego, Riff of the Ruined King. <laughs> okay, that's a good take on that. Slam down on the hex adjacent to the current target that would strike the most enemies, dealing physical damage to enemies within two hexes and marking for a few seconds. Uh, marked enemies take 10% bonus damage from all sources, and then attacks on marked enemies deal empowered physical damage instead. Headliner effect, 300 health, 15 AD. Let's bounce, okay, let's do that. EDM and Brawler. Bounce three times uh, between the nearest enemies dealing magic damage, stunning them for one second and healing themselves. Headliner effect is 315 AP. Uh, what, what do we have next? Uh, Zed, Shadow Dance. Marks his target and spawns an untargetable shadow with percent of attack damage for 4 seconds. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to fix that. And then after a brief delay or when the target falls below some health, the mark triggers dealing physical damage and then you get health. Zed Shadow gains AD and AS, so all good there. And then we finally have our 5 cost champions. These are going to be like the breadwinners or whatever you want to call them, but Drums of the Deep. Every 3 seconds, allow his tentacles slam at nearby targets for magic damage. Uh, active, revives, and fully heals her tentacles. She leaps at the nearest enemy and then drums on the ground three times, dealing magic damage to surrounding enemies with her tentacle slam in a rhythm with her targets near them. Gains armor and MR as she's doing it. So she just, she just like does a bunch of stuff, hits everything, gains a bunch of tank stats. Pretty wild. Gonna be Ill Beats and Brawler. Okay, Jin, Maestro, or Maestro, and Big Shot. Concerto to Demise. Passive, if your bench has four grand finale rifles, begin conducting instead of attacking. Each rifle deals physical damage. Okay. This is probably going to be the coolest one, though. Uh, active, put grand rifle finale into one of the empty bench slots. So you have to, like, cast four times, and then you get more AD. Combat start, you get an extra rifle. So it makes it a little bit easier if you get um, the headliner effect. Um, headliners, I think, only happen on level 10, right? Kane Reaping Splash. Uh, it was this dash, then deal magic damage to all adjacent enemies and chill them for three seconds. If only Kane hits one target, he immediately casts again. So they're bringing back like an older version of Kane that did something similar. Uh, but we have Heartsteel, Wildcard, and Edgelord for that. Headliner is bonus AP and Shadow Assassin rewards with an extra two gold. Rass rewards extra health. Lucian, we have Jazz and Rapid Fire. Uh, his ability is going to be Arpeggio, fire shots towards the furthest enemy in a wide musical scale, and then each shot explodes on the first enemy hit, dealing physical damage to all enemies and reducing their armor for the rest of combat. Uh, so they like the support 
five costs uh, in the last set at least, and they're bringing some of them back. They like reduce armor, but they still do have the pure carry ones. Like Jin is definitely like a pure carry, right? But I think Lucian is going to be a little bit different. I I'm sure he still does carry. Maybe you don't like need a Last Whisper or something like that. Kiana, Sample, and Remix. True Damage and Crowd Diver. So Sample and Remix, just like how people do that with my videos and thumbnails and titles, copy the target, uh, the current target's completed items and throw them to an ally they look really good on, okay? Knock the current target to the edge of the board and deal physical damage to them, plus true damage if no item was copied. So, um, mm, we haven't really seen that before. Bling bonus, after sample and remix kills a champion with a copyable item, create a permanent component based on the copied item, and in hyperroll you gain both of them. Headliner, AD, and then when she copies an item, 5 AD as well on the bonus. Sona, the drop, Mixmaster, and Spellweaver. Everyone's waiting for the drop, right? When is the Bunny Muffins video going to drop next? Well, you have to kind of subscribe for that, right? So I guess you could do it if you want. Uh, <laughs> kinetic passive attacks instead send a beat to an ally, healing them for a percent of their max health. Active send a beat to all allies and grant them shield for a few seconds. Headliner effect, 10% AD, gains 2% attack speed every time she attacks. Ethereal passive is going to be attacks instead send a beat to an ally, granting them attack speed for 4 seconds. And then active grant all allies attack speed and magic damage on attack for six seconds keep in mind like she had like different game modes or like different types so that's kind of what we're going over right now that's why she has like three abilities but concussive passive is attacks instead send a beat to an ally granting both sona and the ally ability power and then the active is dealing damage to the nearest enemy headliner is going to be attack speed and she's going to gain a lot more attack speed every time she attacks okay um, what do you want to do for itemizing that? Seems a little, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, Yorick, get in this pit. Summon headbanging zombies around the edge of the board that pile in towards the center, each dealing physical damage over three attacks. Zombies damage 20% sunders. Okay, this is not English, but whatever. Um, every other cast also summons a big zombie. That's going to be a lot of uh, summons. Okay, they normally haven't done a lot of summons in the past. So I'm glad that they're bringing a little bit of it back. But Pentakill, Guardian, Mosher, I don't know why they stopped doing it. There must have been, I, I know there was some, there's probably some Mort Dog clip out there of him explaining why they like stopped with summoning stuff for a bit, but they're bringing it back, which I'm kind of happy about. I thought I always thought it was kind of cool to look at on the board, but headliner effect is going to be health and summons more zombies. Big zombie is bigger, okay, and deals extra damage. Zig's Chaos Theory, that's going to be Hyper Pop and Dazzler. Throw a bomb at the current target that deals magic damage. It splits into some bombs that shred their target for four seconds and deal split magic damage. Each cast increases the number of bombs by three, and then you get the shredding thing. Headliner is going to be AP and reduce bonus mana or max mana. So it seems like the legendaries, a lot of them are kind of like support-ish, um, but we have two carries. I think Jin is going to be a main carry. We have the main tank with Olawi, I'm assuming. Uh, Kane is like kind of a mix and then he's like utility right and then I think Kiana is going to be a pretty good carry too uh, but we'll have to kind of see everyone else it's like if you're missing like shred or whatever add zigs if you're missing like sunder effect add Yorick obviously um, but yeah those are going to be the legendaries pretty solid overall I I'm looking forward to Jin the most seems to be the coolest one uh, but now we are going to get into the augments so they are removing every single plus one trait augment thank god because those are like you just pick it and then you're like, you don't make decisions for the rest of the game anymore. You know exactly which eight units you're gonna play. And then every augment that comes up after that, you're like, oh, is it another trait augment? Yep, take it, don't have to think. So I'm glad they kind of got rid of that. But let's get into some of the new ones. They added talent search. All of your units gain their unique headliner effect. Okay, that sounds pretty wild, right? That's like kind of like a build different, but without needing to be built different. Okay, so it's just a generic buff to your whole team. Hologram, it is prismatic though. Uh, your headliner champion is cloned. You cannot equip items on a clone. That'd be really good on like a tank, I think. On a carry, not so much. Remember your roots. Allies that share a trait with your headliner gain 200 health and 20% attack speed. Okay, makes sense. Uh, give me energy. Crowd divers gain 3 armor, MR, AD. Okay, everything for each adjacent enemy. Uh, gain more. Okay, so that's the one where they jump in and explode when they die. Heroic Presence. Enemies that attack a guardian shield take magic damage equal to 7% of the shielded unit's max health up to once per second. Gain a Pantheon. Uh, remember your roots. We already did that one. The old Razzle Dazzle. Uh, our Dazzler effects last an additional 2 seconds and deals 100% more damage. Gain 2 Dazzler units. Submit to the Mosh. 
Moshers, basic attacks deal some percent of their damage to enemies within a hex around their target, gain two moshers, learning to spell. Okay, I think they kind of need to do that, right? Uh, your units permanently gain one AP for every two takedowns. Units start with 15 bonus AP. Okay, so get this plus, um, what was the champion that stacks AP? Was it Mordekaiser? I don't really remember. The heavy hitters, your units with at least 1600 max health gain AD and AP equal to 2% of their max health. So that's gonna be really, really good for reroll comps. Holy cow, because they almost always have over 1600. Inspiring uh, epitaph, I don't know how to say this. Epitaph? I know it's a word, I've just never said it before. When a unit dies, the nearest ally gains a shield for 40% of their max health and 15% shield, and then there's gonna be 45 other new augments that they're gonna be coming out with. New portals, gold augment first. Uh, okay, it's prismatic, okay. Portals are gonna be a lot simpler as we see here, but they also mentioned that in like some of their previews. So um, instead of like having like all prismatic or something, it's gonna be like gold first, prismatic first, all silver, all gold, all prismatic, prismatic third, so you could kind of plan ahead. Tier three starts, start the game with a random tier three champion. Duplicator, triple champion, Gold per augment, gold per item, pot of gold. At stage 6-1, all living players split a pot of 120 gold. Is it equal? 120 divided by 8. What is that? 120 divided by 8. That's going to be 15. Ah, dang it. I said 15 in my head before I did the calculation, but I wasn't sure of it. All right. Artifact anvil. Start with an artifact anvil that lets you choose from powerful items with unique effects. Uh, component anvils. Gain two components. Okay. Radiant item. Get a radiant. All these are like very straightforward, right? It's like, it, you get what it says. It's now no longer like Nox Crya or something like that, right? Uh, completed anvil, gain a completed anvil. Scuttle puddle, same as before. So that's the only one that's kind of like wacky, but they're keeping. Uh, player health increase, double item carousel, training dummy, unit accelerator. Uh, showtime, headliners appear in your shop as if you're a one level higher. Ooh, pretty cool. Multi-talented, headliners grant plus one to another one of their traits. So you could go like really deep into two traits at the same time. Item changes. Okay, they're removing rapid fire cannon. They're gonna be bringing back the red buff. And red buff's gonna be a little different though. You just burn on attack, and you also get a bunch of attack speed and deal bonus damage. Uh, Crest of the Cinders, that's gonna be the radiant version. They also have another one, which is uh, instead of Nightbringer, they're gonna have Heart Seal or Steadfast Heart. Take 8% less damage while above 50% health, and take 15% less damage uh, when you're below it, or sorry, when you're above it. This one's just gonna be like a tank item being built from Glove. Were there any other changes? I think there was like one more. Maybe maybe that's it. I think they just did like minor buffs and nerfs of various items, but that's gonna be what the set's gonna be about. So obviously that's a really big set, pretty big update. And we're gonna have this for four months, which is gonna be a lot different. That's gonna be longer than like all the other sets we've kind of dealt with. I'm most excited for the leveling changes. We're gonna be definitely doing videos on that. Gonna be doing like leveling guides, new beginner guides in case one of your friends is trying to play or maybe you don't have friends and you just play emo instead. And yeah, Rip Legends, yeah, topic for a different day. Uh, new, what do you call it, seem pretty cool. The music theme seems really good with all the traits and origins. Um, overall, decently excited. My favorite champion from each cost, let's see. Probably from one cost, it's gonna be maybe um, Kennen. Kennen is like kind of weird, right? He was a tank, but he has got great CC. I think he's gonna be pretty cool. Two costs, I think it's gonna be Hmm. I I've always liked Kaisa. She always does really cool stuff. So maybe it's gonna go with Kaisa there. Tier three, definitely gonna be a Mumu. I'm it's like a feels bad bro, like it's okay. Tier four, uh, probably Akali. Akali, no, it's gotta be Blitzcrank, the cat, come on. Okay, most of the four costs are cool, like Ezreal, Caitlyn, come on. Karthus is bad, oh my god, this one's tough. Okay, I I'm just gonna go off the picture for four costs, cause like, honestly, for abilities, the other ones are probably a little bit cooler, but like, come on, you can't say no to that. <laughs> and then Legendaries, it's Jin already, don't even have to look at the other ones. Um, but yeah, what's gonna be your favorites down in the comments below? Traits, items even, like whatever you want. Uh, let me know because we're gonna be doing like a lot of stuff in set 10 I'm gonna try to like play a lot more in set 10 like I haven't really played a lot of set 9.5 It was kind of boring for me a lot of people when like the set is bad. They complain about it for me I just like don't play it as much so I don't know why people like complain so much You could just like not play the game, right? But set 10 I am very excited. I plan on playing a ton. I say this every set though uh, but actually I did not say that in 9.5 in set 9 I'd said that but I did play set 9 set 10 I do plan on playing a lot, so hopefully you all join me in that journey, and I will see you all in my future videos, I hope. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you all later.